All right, welcome everyone. This is Moxum. Uh, I'm going to continue where I left off with the last video, uh, where I was taking you through uh, creating a song from uh, from scratch uh, with the workflow that I currently have. So uh, we're just going to dive right in and continue from there. Uh, what we did before is we kind of set up a, a baseline on the Pittsburgh Modular Lifeforms primary oscillator. Uh, we set up some drums and we set up a little uh, synth line on one of the neutrons. So we have another neutron to go. Um, and we also kind of played around with the chords. But uh, now what I'd like to do in this video is uh, go over adding in some vocal type samples and also digging deeper into uh, the variations option on the Metron, which is amazing, and we'll extend um, all of the loops out, uh, probably to 128 beats. So, all right, so let's dive right in. Um, Everything is playing from where we left off. We had a couple kicks going. We had some claps, lots of hi-hats going. This is what the Neutron's doing right now. I've kind of played with these sounds a little bit, but haven't really touched much else since uh, the last video the other day. And hopefully you can hear me okay. It sounds okay in the headphones, so I can turn it up a little bit. Me a little bit better this way. Yeah, that's good. Uh, we've got the life forms. And I have a control voltage going from the neutrons LFO running into this control voltage input. Hopefully you can see this good on one of these cameras. Of course we have the cord, the cord channel coming out of the E370. So that sounds pretty nice. So now we're gonna go into this bit box here. Let me get a little bit closer. This one I've been pretty much exclusively using for drums. And this one I'll use for like the vocal samples. I've got about 10 trigger inputs for this one, that's why I'm using it for drums. That's how I have it set up. But I've only got four for this one, so I've got four outputs and four inputs that I can use for samples. Yeah, I picked this one earlier, I like it, so we'll just throw it in there. These are track groups. When you see me going through these, it's basically you've got four tracks in your sequencer, but you've got four track group groups giving you 16 triggers to play with. Which is great. It's great. I love this sequencer. Uh, so. So we're quickly going to notice now it's going to get pretty repetitious with a 16 beat loop. So what I want to do right now is I'm just, uh, I'm on page. This is, if you can't see this closely, I'm, I'm trying to do this with being able to keep my hands free. I actually do have a GoPro strapped to my shoulder, <laughs> see how, as you saw in the intro. So anyway, I can just turn to page eight. I'm going to do that. And if I just hold down pattern length, well, duplicate, just duplicate pattern length. I think that did it. And pattern length, and push it down. Yep. 
So now I can scroll through the pages and I can turn off that sample from triggering. So now we can watch we can watch this count up. And you're not gonna hear that until it goes to eight and then and then back to one. Eight. I'm going to select the new sample from my playlist here. It's nice, but it's more of a fill. You know? I'm curious, let's hear how that marimba sounds. Let's trigger that, I know that I'm right here. So let's trigger that on the one, see how that goes. I want to make sure to check some settings. I want to make sure mono's on. And going out one and two is what I want for my output. Turn the level up a little bit, let me say like negative 18. I'd love to have some effects in the dead box. A delay, a reverb, I could put on any channel, would be so great. I don't know, I don't love that, but...
sequencer and if I want to I can say duplicate oh. I can say duplicate and I'm going to duplicate variation A which is the button above it and I'm going to 
click on B. Uh, I don't know, I'm going to do that twice. Okay, and then when I hit play again, which is record and reset. And if I'm using a Symphonian, I always want to get in the habit of once I hit play again, um, and I'm sending the trigger from the Metron to the Symphonian, I always want to, after I start playing again, I always want to hit reset one more time. Because once you get a nice playing, moving reset to it, uh, it, it it's in sync real well. Uh, if you don't do that, you, you'll probably notice like, oh, this thing's always off of just a little bit with uh, once you get into what we'll get into later, which is uh, sequencing chord progressions or at least changes of the settings uh, of the symphony and using its sequencer. So that's really exciting. I wanted to, I wanted to get into this and I want to do some variations. And then once we do that, uh, kind of fill up some more of the, uh, the capabilities that we still have hiding in here, uh, you know, use the rest of the samples and stuff. Yeah, so. Right, so now we can uh, click once and you'll see it start pulsing. And at this point, we could edit without listening to variation number two. So we can edit it and then once we want to transfer what everybody's hearing to this variation, we can just click that one more time. And when it gets around to the next quantize, there you go, now we're hearing the second one. So now that I've done this, I'm gonna stop it again, okay? And I'll hit reset. Um, I'm gonna duplicate this again. This time I'm gonna say uh, duplicate B and I'm gonna duplicate it into C. And I'll make sure and verify that I wanna do that. Okay, and uh, I'll hit play again. I'll go to variation C and, uh, and I'll hit reset. Okay. Now, the reason I wanted to do that is because Usually when I'm writing something, it's, uh, it's kind of in full effect, right? Because uh, that's kind of how you get down layering things and, and, and composing, in, in my experience and the way I do it. So what I want to do is I want to treat my variations like parts of a song, so that's like your song mode. At the touch of a button, you can switch between maybe your intro and maybe it's like verse one and then, uh, you know, your main stuff and then maybe a breakdown and an outro. So that's how I'll treat this. So what I wanted to do is kind of get what we made into all three of these. So that's what we've done by duplicating them. So now I can kind of go backwards in time, right? Now we can go back. Oh, we gotta wait for it to go back around. So once that, go, once that goes back around. Okay. You're not gonna hear any change, but it's different. So let's do this. Let's, uh, let's see which kick drum. I'm just going to go through and I'm going to turn off Okay, so I'm just I'm just replacing my open hats uh, with my closed hats. So there's still something there. So when I switch, it's just gonna kind of enhance, you know, what, what we've already got. Click on one, and maybe I'll go back to my fourth one and uh, I'll just go five on. Let's do.
gonna do for this uh for this video. Sounds good.